Hey everyone, Bryce GG Color here. So, it's finally summer. And uh, as you can hear in the background, the noises are starting to begin. This is gonna be fun. So you may be asking, why am I recording from outside instead of my usual quarters? Well, just to give you a heads up, I'm going away very soon and that means I'm not going to have any time to edit and upload the summer special for this year. Kind of unfortunate, but hey, if the summer started, who, who the hell wants it to end? So I think I'm going to leave you with one last review before I go away. Something that, quite honestly, I wanted to get to ever since I started this channel. So sit back, stand up. Lean forward, lean back, or whatever suits you personally, as we take a look at the 2006 experimental movie, Electroma. So I was originally going to do an entire filmography video on Daft Punk in the same vein as the one I did for Beard, but they only released two movies. And one of them was a companion piece for one of their studio albums. What the hell am I supposed to work with here? So it only makes more sense to talk about their 2006 experimental movie, Electroma, released under the Daft Arts label. This is one of the many films I've seen where I'm not 100% sure what to make of it. It's very unorthodox. So unorthodox, in fact, that it's kind of disorientating. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, of course, because, come on, it's a Daft Punk movie. I could take what I could get from them. But it's also one that has no story, no dialogue. I don't even think there's any Daft Punk music, something that the duo were most well known for. Half of it is just them walking through deserts. Again, pretty unusual for a Daft Punk movie. But where it does stand out, though, is with the visuals, because, well, look at it. Everything is Daft Punk in this world. The people are Daft Punk. The children are Daft Punk. The rock carvings are Daft Punk. Even John Tron is Daft Punk. <laughs> this movie's trippy and surreal visuals are easily my favorite part of the movie. Like, they could spend six minutes in a room disguising themselves as humans and it would still look great. Even the back end of the film could get into some really strange places, with one of the characters spontaneously combusting and the other would just explode out of nowhere. It's some pretty surreal stuff. And because no one asked, those are the only two deaths in the entire movie. Hey, I never said that Daft Punk were massive with everything. Not even Interstellar 5555 had that high of a body count. It's also no surprise that the soundtrack is also pretty great, with some of the music supervision setting the film's overall tone, like with songs by Todd Rundgren, Curtis Mayfield, even Brian Eno at one point. But when the tracks get liminal, good god do they sound great. Going back to Interstellar for a moment, while I do love it as a companion piece to the album Discovery, some of the tracks just don't fit with some scene's overall tone at all. Like, take a look at this for example. A little distracting, don't you think? Like, imagine if the soundtrack for Tor 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 was done by Blank Banshee. That would've worked as a charm now, would it? <laughs> music like this playing over some admittedly pretty disturbing imagery it's honestly really hard to believe how well it goes together but if you had to put me up at gunpoint and force me to admit the one thing that is wrong with this movie i guess you could say that the pacing is a little too slow like the only reason some of the shots are as long as they are is so that they could reach the minimum runtime for your average feature film, which even then they're still a tad short of, given that it's only 69 minutes without credits. Yes, I know what I said. Shut up. Overall, I'm almost certain that this won't win everyone over considering its unconventional structure and bizarre imagery, but if you like seeing Guy Manuel and Tamar walk around the suburbs and deserts for 70 minutes, I'm sure this is worth viewing one more time.
But enough about robots disguising themselves as humans and walking through the desert so that they could get horribly maimed on their own terms. I want to talk about a screaming Icelandic vocalist singing about big band tunes, ambitious ambient alien planets, mushrooms, her own country, and screaming at 2D to leave her alone. Yeah. Next week, we're coming full circle. Stay tuned. Thank you.